Example 1 of Monohybrid Crosses for Biology 10. A homozygous two-horned mare, a dicorn, is crossed with a homozygous one-horned stallion, a unicorn. The F1 generation are all unicorns. Which gene is dominant? And what are the genotypes of the parents? Pause the video, answer these two questions, and then unpause. Well, the dominant gene must be the gene coding for unicorns, given that all the F1 offspring, all the children, are unicorns. Uh, I will pick H as my um, unicorn or dicorn gene, so capital H will represent the unicorn gene. This will, of course, mean that lowercase h is the recessive designator or allele. What are the genotypes of the parents? Well, given this particular type of cross, uh, both are homozygous, and so the unicorn, the stallion, the male, must be uh, the dominant having both dominant genes, and the female, the dicorn, must have both recessive genes. So the male is homozygous dominant, and the female is homozygous recessive. Another three questions. What are the gametes from the parents? What is the phenotype of the F1 generation? And what is the genotype of the F1 generation? To refer back, the male can only produce dominant alleles for the gametes. The female can only produce recessive alleles for the gametes. So for the female, the gametes will only be those with one lowercase letter, H. The males will only have the dominant allele. What is the phenotype of the F1 generation? Well, in the question, the F1 generation, the offspring, were all unicorns. So phenotype is what they, their physical characteristics, which is unicorns. What is the genotype of the F1? Well, the male can only produce this gene, and the female can only produce the recessive gene, and the offspring all have to have a gene from each parent. You get one gene from your mom, one gene from your dad. Then the genotype has to be a heterozygous form. This Heterozygous would make sense, uh, given that all of the offspring were uh, unicorns, they would all take after the dominant trait, which is unicorns. With a Punnett square, show the cross between two of the F1 generation to reveal the F2 generation. Give the phenotypic ratio, the genotypic ratio, and answer the following question. If there were 80 offspring, on average, how many would be I, dicorns, I, I, heterozygous, three, one and a half corns, four, homozygous recessive, and five, heterozygous recessive. Pause, answer these questions, and then unpause. Back to the first part of the question. We'll use the Punnett square to show the cross between two of the F1 generation to reveal the F2 generation. Both of the F1 one generation will have the same genotype. They're all the same, so capital and lowercase. They were heterozygous. They will then create these gametes. These gametes will then combine, uh, much like a multiplication table, to show the possible offspring. For the phenotypic ratio, the only two phenotypes are unicorn and dicorn. Always state uh, the phenotypes and the ratio that you're using. Unicorn to dicorn. Which of these squares represent unicorns and dicorns? Well, capital H, that is homozygous dominant. Homozygous would be unicorn. Heterozygous would take after the dominant trait. That would be a unicorn. This would be a unicorn. But homozygous recessive would be a dicorn. And so we would have a 3 to 1 ratio. You may also do these uh, ratios as a percent, in which case we would have 75% to 25%. 
unicorn to die corn. The next question, what is the genotypic ratio? The genotypes we have are homozygous dominant, heterozygous, and homozygous recessive. We have one homozygous dominant, two heterozygous, and one homozygous recessive. Again, we can put these as percents, 25% to 50% to 25 percent. Now the next question is where it gets a little bit more interesting. If you had so many offspring, how many would be of each type? For this type of question, it is often useful to divide up the offspring into each one of the boxes in the Punnett square that represent the offspring. 80 divided by 4, that would be 20 in each box. We've got a reference Punnett square here. And now we can answer the question. Well, how many will be dicorns? Dicorns are only in this box, so that would be 20. How many will be heterozygous? Heterozygous are these two here, having different forms of the gene, and that would be 40. How many would be one and a half corns? This question is testing to see whether you know uh, the difference between dominant and recessive. There are no one and a half corns. If it is heterozygous, it takes after the dominant trait. So the answer to that question would be zero. How many are homozygous recessive? Well, that would be this box, and that would be 20. How many are heterozygous recessive? This, these terms don't make much sense together. If it's heterozygous, it takes after the dominant trait. There's they have both forms of the gene, dominant and recessive, so this terminology is a bit confusing, but essentially there is no such thing as being heterozygous and showing the recessive trait, so this is also a trick question. The answer is zero. And that is the last question for this particular example.